Hey guys, welcome back to another video from Elk 101. And just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to the Elk 101 channel on YouTube yet, just click the subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the little notification bell so that you're getting notified every time a new video like this one pops up on YouTube. Today we're talking about Oregon and the state of Oregon specific to elk hunting applications, the controlled draw process, and we're gonna get into uh, a topic that we haven't touched on a lot yet, and that's over-the-counter hunts. And we're going to talk about why Oregon might be uh, an overlooked state when it comes to those over-the-counter elk hunts. So again, to help us with the uh, discussion today, we're going to go to Go Hunt and go into the Insider uh, membership. And one of the things I want to talk about before we jump into specifics uh, for, the, for the controlled hunts in Oregon are just some of the basics. So in Oregon, if you want to apply for a controlled hunt, you've got to purchase a license. And for a non-resident, that's $167. Uh, if you don't purchase a license, you don't apply for a controlled hunt. That also applies for purchasing a preference point. So if you want to purchase a preference point in the state of Oregon, you have to buy that hunting license. Again, $167 for a non-resident, then $8 per species for your application. Uh, if you draw the tag or if you're planning on hunting over the counter, Oregon charges $571 for the elk tag to hunt elk. Uh, in Oregon, the controlled hunt, the, the drawing process is based on a hybrid preference point system. So 75% of the available tags go to those applicants who have the most points for that hunt. So if you have 10 points for elk in Oregon and you apply for a hunt and no one is applying for that hunt with more points than you, you automatically get that. 75% uh, of the tags go to those with the most points. The other 25% are issued randomly. Uh, so if you think about that, you know, somebody you might think is a non-resident, I have a chance of drawing uh, a tag in Oregon based in that random draw. However, Oregon limits non-residents to no more than 5% of the tags for elk. So that means if there are 100 tags for a hunt, uh, a non-resident cannot draw more than five. They don't set aside five for non-residents. A non-resident might draw zero tags, but they cannot draw more than 5%. When you think about the uh, preference round, so the 75 tags that are set aside for those with the most points, Typically, a non-resident is going to have more points than a resident. They just, there's fewer tags, they're going to accumulate points, there are going to be more non-residents in the draw with higher points than a resident, just because of the, the number of tags that are given out. What happens is those non-residents typically are going to draw those five tags that are available for non-residents in that preference point round meaning there will be no tags left over for a non-resident in the random draw round. So don't get your hopes up as a non-resident, especially in the harder to draw hunts, that you're gonna be able to actually draw a tag unless you have the, the maximum number of points for that hunt. One more important factor I wanna to touch on in the state of Oregon for the draw hunts is point creep. And what point creep is, is let's say that in a preference point system like Oregon, it takes 10 points to draw a certain hunt. And you would think that next year it would take no more than 10 points. But when you have point creep, you end up with more people with the maximum number of points than they award tags. So maybe we have 200 people with 10 points and only 100 tags. They give out their 75% to those people with 10 points. Now there are 125 people with 10 points left in the draw. That means next year, if those same people apply for the same hunt, there's gonna be 125 people with 11 points applying for that same hunt. So next year is gonna take 11 points. The following year, 12 points. And the points creep up each year by at least one, or maybe every other year it creeps up by one, and it requires more points to draw that hunt as time goes on. In Oregon, it's a very real and very big problem. If we look at uh, units such as uh, the Walla Walla unit. So in Oregon, the top three elk units are gonna be the Wenaha unit, the Walla Walla unit, and Mount Emily. That's no secret, no surprise. Uh, they're all gonna take probably 
16 or 17 points or more to have a chance of drawing those hunts as a non-resident. So if we go into Oregon and we select non-resident and we take a look at elk. We're going to go archery in the Walla Walla unit. So we are right here, unit 55. This is Oregon archery controlled. So if we look this uh, 2018, it took 20 points to be guaranteed uh, to draw the Walla Walla archery tag in the state of Oregon. Now what's crazy about it is there are only 25 tags issued and only one non-resident tag. So if we go back in time, in 2015 it took 17 points, in 2016 it took 18 points, in 2018 it's taking 20 points. You get the idea of what creep, uh, point creep looks like. It just takes more and more points each year. So we can assume that for 2019 you're going to need 21 points to have a chance of drawing that Walla Walla tag. Uh, if we look at another unit, I actually drew a controlled hunt in the state of Oregon in 2014, and I drew the Sled Springs unit, which is a, a decent unit. It took me nine points to draw, and I certainly wouldn't say it was a unit that was worth nine points. But to take a look at point creep, if we look at Sled Springs, we are unit 57. In 2014, I drew with nine points. In 2015, you were guaranteed with nine points. In 2016, it took 10 points. 2017 took 10 points. Last year, 2018, it took 12 points. So you can see what's happening with these controlled hunts in Oregon. Each year, it's taking more and more points. The problem is if you're just getting into the point game in Oregon, you're probably going to be chasing these hunts potentially forever never gaining enough points to actually have a chance of drawing, especially in these top five or ten hunts. If you're looking at hunts that take three to five points, you probably have a better chance the point creep there isn't going to be as bad because they offer more tags or there are fewer people putting in and you're going to be able to recycle through that. If you draw in three or four years, you can get back in the game and draw again maybe in five or six years. If you're chasing these, these harder to draw hunts, realistically, you're not going to be able to draw those hunts if you're just now getting into the game. So let's take a look at maybe some of those hunts that we can draw with three to five points. And if we go to Go Hunt Insider and we select Oregon. Again, if you've not watched any of these state-by-state uh, -state application or elk hunting strategy videos, uh, I rely heavily on Go Hunt Insider and I'll show you why here. If we go to Oregon and select elk, uh, we have all sorts of filters that we can apply. So if I want any trophy potential, uh, my residency, I'm a non-resident, it's first choice, and let's say we have five points. So I'm gonna look at units with five points, or that I can draw with five points. Uh, I'm gonna leave it open for archery, muzzleloader, rifle, I want public land to be at least 50% of that unit and harvest success. I'll leave it at 5% for right now. So these are the units in Oregon that I have a chance of uh, applying for with five points. Now we're still set at a 0% draw odd. So I'm going to move that up to, uh, let's move it up to 100%. And we should see some of these units disappear. Uh, let's go and just look at archery. Well, the problem is we still have the general hunts open right now. So let's look at archery controlled, muzzleloader controlled, and rifle controlled. <clears throat> so we've got those controlled hunts up. These are our options. And then we can look down through each of these units that are now available and look at uh, bull to cow ratios, harvest success percentages, as well as uh, some other information like how many applicants for each of these hunts. The first thing you'll notice about Oregon when you start looking, their bull to cow ratios are incredibly low. So for instance, this unit, the bull to cow ratio is 6 to 100. Harvest success rate, 5%. 
Let's bump up our harvest success rate and get up a little bit higher, maybe to 10%, just to weed out some of these really low success units. You notice a few of them dropped off. Now we're into harvest success on archery, 21%, but we're still at bull to cow ratio of 9 to 100. As we slide down to some of these other units, now we're getting into a rifle hunt with 26% success, 29 to 100 bull to cow ratio, trophy potential of 320 plus. Now we're starting to see some of the units that maybe are a little better. And we can continue to apply these filters and narrow down the units that are going to uh, stand out to us. So if I'm looking just for an archery controlled hunt and I have five points, I only have three options for hunts that I can draw. And in those, we're looking at fairly low bull to cow ratios, average success rates, um, trophy potential, not necessarily all that great. If we go into a rifle controlled hunt, we're gonna have quite a few more that stand out now. And success rates, if we bump up to 20%, we still have a handful of units that have a 20% or greater success rate that we can draw guaranteed 100% with five points as a non-resident. Again, some of these are 29 to 100 uh, bull to cow ratios, 21 to 100, 16 to 100. We do have some with five and seven and 10 that might not be as appealing. We've got 25 to 100, 23 to 100. Uh, harvest success rates of 38% harvest success rates of 54%. So definitely don't discount Oregon as a non-resident destination and don't discount the draw process in Oregon as a non-resident either. Uh, using a tool like Go Hunt Insider is going to show you exactly what your odds are, exactly what the potential of the unit is, and some of those details that will help you make a decision on what hunt you might be interested in applying for. If you're interested in applying for or signing up for a membership for Go Hunt Insider, just go to gohunt.com forward slash elk101 and you can get signed up. When you sign up at that link, Go Hunt's going to send you a gift card for $50 at the Elk 101 store. So uh, from there, what I want to talk about is more of the over the counter opportunities in Oregon because draw hunts are tough. They don't give out a lot of tags. It's very limited for a non-resident especially, but Oregon has a lot of units you can hunt as a non-resident over the counter. One of the things I forgot to mention, whether it's a draw hunt or over the counter in Oregon, you have to pick up your tag before that hunt opens. So if you're hunting archery, uh, I forget what the actual date is this year. Let me just go to archery general here and get that date for you. Uh, if you're hunting the Archery General and it opens this year August 24th, you have to purchase your tag in Oregon before August 24th. So don't forget that and show up there on a Saturday thinking that you're going to just go buy your tag after the season's open because you're not going to have a chance to. You're going to have to go to the Fishing Game Headquarters office to buy your license and, or buy your tag if the season is opened. So from here, let's go to a non-resident. Uh, we don't need to worry about choices or points because we're looking over the counter. So I'm just going to put zero points in there. Minimum draw odds are 0% and we're looking general archery season. Uh, I'm going to turn all the filters down because it's going to open up a lot more when we look at units that don't have a lot of public land that still have some public land, but not 50%. So what we're looking at here are all of the units in Oregon that I can hunt with a general archery elk license, elk tag. And there are several. If we want to filter it down and start looking at which ones are going to be best for us, we can do that. But I just want to illustrate here, the whole east side of the state basically, other than one area in the middle and the northwest or the northeast corner, which is where you'll find the Wenaha, the Sled Springs, the Walla Walla, the Mount Emily units, everything else, is available to hunt over the counter for a non-resident. Now, Oregon does get a lot of hunting pressure uh, in both archery and rifle seasons, especially in those general over-the-counter units, but Oregon also has a lot of areas where you can get away from hunting pressure. And I wanna look at here just a few of the 
filters we can apply to help us choose a good unit. So if we go back up, I want to put my trophy potential up at 300 inches, which Oregon's not known for big bulls, especially in their over-the-counter units. So it gets rid of a lot of the southeast part of the state, and we're looking mostly in northeast corner of the state for any kind of uh, mature bull potential. From there, I want to look at public land, and I want to make sure I have at least 50% public land. We lose another half of those units. So now we're left with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units that give us trophy potential of 300 plus 50% public land. Now we're still at 0% harvest or greater. So if we bump this up to 10%, all of these units stay with us. So we can scroll down through each of these units, Murderers, Crick, Desolation, Starkey, each of these. We've got bull to cow ratio shown. We've got harvest success rate shown. Uh, some of them don't uh, show up once we click on them. We're not able to buy an over-the-counter tag for that. Some of them, it might be for cow only. So there's a lot more criteria we have to look at. But for the most part, we're looking at pretty decent success rates, harvest success rates for an over-the-counter archery hunt. As we start scaling this up and we want to find which one's going to be best for us, 17%, uh, Unit 62, Pine Creek. This is on the Imnaha River. Uh, it's going to be some rugged country there on the Idaho border. We've got 76% public land. 34% of the bulls that are harvested are six point or better, but our bull to cow ratio is seven bulls per 100 cows. If we click into Pine Creek, and I'm just using this as an example. I've never been there. I don't know anything about the Pine Creek unit in Oregon. But as we click into it for more information on it, we can scroll down and find out that it holds a healthy number of elk with a good number of five point or bigger bulls. It's rough terrain, lacks roads, frequent road closures, abundance of timber cover makes it difficult for hunting. Uh, that's actually a good thing for us if we're trying to get away from the crowd. So there are opportunities uh, for general, the tags are sold over the counter, hunting near water in early season, focusing on areas near wallows, uh, in late season, bugling and cow calling can be productive. Bow hunters usually do as well as rifle hunters in taking mature bulls. Uh, hunters surveyed in 2017, there were 519 hunters in that unit. Success rates hovered between 17 and 20%. Uh, so anyway, just giving you an idea in the state of Oregon, how much opportunity there is for over-the-counter general hunting. And using a tool like Go Hunt Insider can be really handy to help us narrow down even over-the-counter units in the state of Oregon. One thing we haven't touched on here is the whole west side of the state of Oregon. And the west side of the state of Oregon is Roosevelt Elk Country. And you can use the exact same criteria to help you find the best units in the state of Oregon for hunting Roosevelt elk. All the harvest percentages, bull to cow ratios, all of that information is available there. I believe there's only a couple of units or hunts in the state of Oregon that are controlled for Roosevelt elk for archery. And again, we can take a look at that. If we go into a non-resident, if we want to look at Archery controlled hunts for Roosevelt elk with 0% success rates. We've got unit 24, which is Tioga, and unit 26, which is Powers. It'll tell you your draw odds based on your points and give you bull to cow ratios, success rates, all of that. So hopefully this information is helpful and kind of helps debunk some of the myths about Oregon. Uh, I'm not high on recommending Oregon to a non-resident hunter, especially somebody going for the first time or someone who's not been successful as an elk hunter in the past. Oregon has a lot, a lot of country. Oregon has an abundance of hunters. And for somebody going for the first time, it might be really frustrating, especially if you're going blind. If you're able to use a tool like Go Hunt Insider and narrow down some of those areas and then couple it with, Go, or with Google Earth and Onyx Maps and be able to do some remote scouting, Oregon is definitely a destination that should potentially be on your radar for elk, especially when it comes to over-the-counter options. Uh, when it comes to over-the-counter options, states like Colorado, uh, Idaho, and Oregon 
really are the only ones that offer a really good chance to hunt multiple areas within the state. Uh, Washington does have some over-the-counter, Utah has some over-the-counter, uh, Montana once in a while will have a leftover elk combination license, the last couple of years it has not. Uh, if you do draw in Montana the combination license for elk, you're able to hunt a wide range of units similar to Oregon. But for the most part, if you've applied for all these states and haven't drawn, when it comes to just buying an over-the-counter tag and going, Colorado, Idaho, and Oregon are really the only, the top three options that I would suggest. Oregon would probably be number three in that list, but that doesn't mean that it's a terrible option for over-the-counter hunters looking for an elk hunt uh, that you can show up and, and hunt. Keep in mind again, you do need to purchase that tag before the hunt opens. So you can purchase it online. You can go to the Oregon DFW, which is a Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, website. If you want to apply for uh, a bonus point or a preference point, or you want to apply for a hunt in Oregon, this is a site you go to. You can purchase your license as well as your over-the-counter elk tag here on this site. And the URL for it is just ODFW, which is Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, odfw.huntfishoregon.com. They have a really uh, easy to navigate site for purchasing and applying for these licenses and tags. And I'll just jump in real quick and show you a couple of things that will help you as you go through this application process if you're going to apply for these hunts. So here is the main dashboard once you get logged in. If you have not applied in the past, you're gonna to have to get set up with a hunter angler ID and set up an account here on the ODF and W website. Once you get that set up, you're able to log in. What you wanna do is go to purchase from the catalog. That is how you buy a license or apply for a hunt. If you just go to controlled hunts and click on it, there are no available hunt applications. The reason why, you have to have a hunting license before you can apply for a hunt. So you're gonna to need to go back and purchase from the catalog, purchase your hunting license first. So as a non-resident, in the product categories, we're gonna click on license and we're gonna go annual and an annual hunting license for $167 is what we're gonna to need to apply in Oregon. So we're gonna add that to our cart. It's going to say that it's automatically added our annual wildlife area parking permit. It's a free permit, but it adds it to that. From there, I'm gonna go into big game hunting. And now that I have my annual hunting license in my cart, I can apply for controlled hunts. And when we go back to the top line, we click on big game hunting, I can click on controlled hunts and that's gonna show me only the controlled hunts that I can apply for. So if I want, a, if I want to apply for an elk uh, hunt or if I want to purchase a preference point, I'm going to click on the elk 200 series controlled hunt application. And again, it's $8 per species. I add that to the cart and then I proceed to checkout. So I now have my license and my controlled hunt application for elk in the cart. Proceed to checkout. And here I review everything, everything looks good. I go next and it's going to say, you need to complete the application before your purchase. So my controlled hunt application for elk, I need to go over and hit complete. From complete, it'll ask me if I'm the individual party leader or a party member, I'm applying as an individual. Go next. And here's where I enter my hunt choices. So I can actually go down, select which units I want to put as my first choice, second choice, third choice, all of that. All I wanna do this year is buy a point saver. So I'm just buying a preference point in Oregon. They make it really easy, it's just a checkbox up here. You select that, you don't have to put any hunt choices in and you go to next, make sure and verify everything. You've selected the point saver option in lieu of hunt choices. That's correct. Hit submit. I'm completed now. Go to the next and I'm ready to check out. Just to buy a preference point in the state of Oregon, you're going to pay $175. $167 for the license and $8 for the application. So $175 to get a point. 
If you want to apply for a hunt, you can do that the same process, just selecting those hunt choices. It's going to be the same price. If, you, if you're able to draw that hunt, they're going to charge you another $571 for the tag. Same with over-the-counter, you're going to pay $571 for an over-the-counter tag. For me, I'm hunting in Oregon this fall. We're doing over-the-counter for Roosevelt elk. I have to buy the license anyway, so it's only costing me $8 to get that preference point. I see no reason not to do that. So there's a breakdown of Oregon's process and system for applying and purchasing a preference point. Hopefully this information is helpful for you. Again, as a reminder, if you want to sign up for Go Hunt Insider, just go to gohunt.com forward slash elk 101. And when you sign up, they're going to send you a $50 gift card that you can use at the Elk 101 store. Additionally, if you haven't subscribed to the Elk 101 YouTube channel, do that right now. Just click the little red subscribe button down there and then click the bell and set your notification so that you get a reminder whenever we launch a new video. Again, thanks for watching the video. Good luck if you apply for Oregon. If you're hunting over the counter, good luck and good luck in all of your elk hunting adventures this fall. The success rate for do-it-yourself public land elk hunters hovers around 10%. The reality of that statement is that nine out of 10 elk hunters each fall fail to fill their tag, or the average elk hunter only fills their elk tag once every 10 years. But average no longer applies to you. Crush the averages and sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course today and become a consistently successful elk hunter.